Welcome to West Country Wanderings. The other day I was talking about photography and the permanence of it and that struck me again recently because a couple of relatives lent me some books. You know the sort of things, they're the old photographic images of local areas. Perhaps uh, if you go into your local bookshop or library you'll, you'll find a local history book about the area where you live. And I was looking through one of these books and it was around the Severn Vale. Now I'm actually going to be doing, and I've mentioned this, sorry if I'm boring you with this, but uh, the Severn Vale in a few weeks time as part of prep in terms of learning about the history of the River Severn and the people that lived alongside it. And I was looking through this book of old photographs in, of here in Gloucestershire with a great deal of interest. However, I had one of those wow incredible eureka moments when I saw this particular image. It was of a steam train, you know, nothing unusual about that, but it's where the steam train was that really got me thinking and going into more research. There's a place called Frampton on Seven, in fact I have covered it on one of my older videos, well I'll say older, it was, I think it was late last spring when the village, which is a very picturesque village and I'm sure we'll revisit it again at some point, the villagers opened their gardens uh, for charities and it was fantastic going around their, their wonderful gardens there. And it's a beautiful village and I, I think there's some claim to fame that it has the biggest village green. One of the other reasons that Frampton is famous is the gravel pits. Now it was at one of these gravel pits that I saw the steam train. But the reason that's odd, if you don't know this part of the world, is the fact that I was not aware of any railway at Frampton upon Severn. Indeed, if you go onto Wikipedia, if you have a look at any of the railway atlases, you will not find any mention or diagrammatic image of this particular railway line at Frampton. So it was a bit of a mystery. I was also talking to a relative who sent me some maps that she found on the Scottish Library website and it showed me exactly where this railway ran from. I've been unable to find a great deal of information about it, but this video will be more of a desktop exercise. We're going to be having a look at the route of this former railway, trying to unpicking some of its mysterious history, because a bit like when I did the Tregantle Railway in Cornwall, check that out if you've not seen that, put the thumbnail of that one up now. It was a bit shrouded in mystery, so why not join me for an explore of the railway that ran on the Midland Railway from Froster to Frampton on Severn, here in Gloucestershire. Now the photograph showed a John Eyre and Company locomotive taking gravel from the Seven, Frampton on Seven pits to barges at the Splat Jetty, which we'll have a look at as well, for the Avonmouth docks when they were being built in 1905. At the jetty, the gravel was shot straight from the side tipping hoppers into the barges on the canal. George Bowditch was wearing a watch chain in the photograph and was standing next to a gentleman called Charlie Day, who was white-shirted, and he was close to the rear of the engine. So before we go out into the field, just to give you a little bit of background to this railway, it was sometimes known as the Ballast Pit Branch and it ran from the Midland Railway at Froster Station, which obviously is now closed and I'll drop in the date of that close, across the fields, which we'll go in to look at in more detail, through the edge of the village of Easington, crossing the Bristol Road, which is now the A38, near a place called Clay Pits. It was built during World War I, mainly by German prisoners of war to transport gravel. Prior to this, most gravel was shipped out via the Gloucestershire Sharpness Canal. The photograph that I saw in 1918 shows a detachment of Royal Defence Corps and they were stationed near the Frampton gravel pits along with several hundred prisoners of wars. Seven different small locomotives were used on the branch and the various lines around the pits. The image that I discovered in the book shows an 040 engine belonging to the John Aird and Company Gravel Extraction. 
This ended around 1920, and within a few years, the clay pit's level crossing was removed. The moment I'm right by the very noisy A38, now the entrance to Park Farm, just outside the village of Cambridge, between Gloucester and Bristol. This is the first location I've come to, hunting for our missing military railway, which runs round between Froster and Frampton on Severn. Now I believe that our railway ran on the track that I'm currently standing on and crossed the A38 just behind me. This is a public right-of-way, bridleway, which links up to the village of Frampton on Severn. And those wooden posts were most decently wooden sleepers. It was a rudimentary railway built in a hurry. But we're going to see if we can find any more evidence of our railway. Now I'm going to start this explore looking for this former military railway. Just off the A38. In fact, I've just moved away a bit further from the A38 because it's incredibly noisy. And uh, we're going to see where the railway crossed the A38. And it does look like it was indeed a level crossing because on the map it's a bit dubious. It looks like it may have been an underbridge, but uh, that's not possible because there's literally no sign of that ever happening. Uh, and I don't believe that it was. I do believe it uh, crossed it on the level. Uh, obviously, there's no remains of the level crossing, but we're going to see what uh, we can find here next to the A38 near the village of Cambridge in Gloucestershire. Now, aside from that two fence posts, which were railway sleepers, and I do apologise for the noise of the traffic. I hope you can hear me okay. So we're right next to the A38. The track going down to the farm is there, and I think the railway went down about a quarter of the way where the drive is to the farm and then turned right across the fields towards Frampton. But because it crossed the A38, although it wouldn't have been as busy in those days, it's, there still would have needed to be some kind of gate across the level crossing. And it may be on my imagination or not, but I think I found something really interesting in the hedge alongside the A38. And it's this. There is one sleeper here, another sleeper here, and we have two long cross beams, one that starts over there going down diagonally, another one underneath at the bottom. And that may have been the form the gate, although it could be that they've just used the constitutional parts of the sleepers and stuck the other bits of wood together. But Obviously, this is in the right location of where the level crossing would have been. So it is that if you follow the hedge down, both up and down, you could actually see quite a few more sleeper posts here as well. So this is the entrance to the farm. This is the, the main driveway coming up to the farmhouse. The A38 is down in that direction. And I think our railway crossed the A38 here, going along there. It didn't go all the way to the farmhouse though. It would have then diverged to the right. There's a tree over there. And that's where it would have aimed for because with the distant trees, that is where the village of Frampton Seven is and the gravel pits which is obviously the purpose of our military railway here. Actually, a little personal tale to tell you about the farm behind me. It's called Park Farm. It's actually the place where I started my very first job. I can't remember the year, but it was a summer job and it was haymaking here at this farm here in Gloucestershire. The barn behind me was actually where I worked all those long summer years ago and uh, it's good to see that there's actually hay still in that particular barn. I remember stacking it up and uh, bundling the hay together with bits of twine and going home with very very sore hands. I didn't have gloves on and the string cut into my hands uh, but it was happy days and it was, as I say, it was my first ever job before I started work at the hardware store and uh, yes I remember it well. Now according to the uh, Scottish Library maps, the old OS maps, the railway track went 
as you're looking at Park Farm to the right of it, so not actually follow the footpath as you work your way around the farm these days where the right of way is, because it goes through a field which is, of course, private and is owned by the, the farmer. But you can see an indentation in the field at this point, which is, I think, where our route went for our railway. So I think our railway came through the hedge over there. Made its way through the lowest point of this field. I think it then went the other side of that uh, small little group of a couple of trees there and shrubbery. And then possibly to that gate in the far corner of the, way, the field. Because that way the land lies too low and I think there's a brook over there. And Frampton does lie indeed in that direction. So it must have crossed over that side there. So we're just going to have a look over there towards that fence to see if there's anything there. Now I'm just checking to see if this pond behind me, which has a fence around it, to see if any of the fence posts are made up of old wooden sleepers, which would indicate the railway. As I say, the main entrance to Park Farm has got those wooden sleepers there, but I can't see any more here. So what I'm going to do is going to check around the pond, around the perimeter of the pond, check over in that corner of the field, and in the far corner of the field, I'm going to call it a day from this location here filming and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back again so don't worry this will continue in the video I'm going to pick it up again at the Frampton end and make my way across the fields towards this direction to see what we can do that side and then I'm going to go over towards Fram uh, Froster to see if there's any remains of where this military branch line left the main Midland railway line between Bristol and Birmingham at Froster. Now, I actually think I'm standing on the route of the railway now because to the left of me, the ground goes down a bit, not lots, but a bit. And it's also quite swampy. This is a bit of higher ground. And it's also a, st a straight track through towards Frampton in front of me. Behind me, it is a little less obvious because obviously that hedge has grown up since the railway closed some, you know, getting on for a hundred years ago now. So 90 odd years. So vegetation is obviously going to have sprung up since then and obviously fields have been ploughed lots of things have grown up so obviously I've realized it was going to be difficult to work out where the route of this railway lane was be but those seeing those sleepers at the front entrance has given me some encouragement so I'm going to head down just this way for a bit and then uh, make my way back that way and then uh, I'll meet you over in Frampton. Yeah so in dead ahead of me I think was the route of our railway. <laughs> handily, it's, I don't know whether it's a quad bike that's come across here, but it's something handily looks like <laughs> marking the course of the railway line, and which I believe that does. So I've come to the end of the track here. <laughs> well, the track does continue through the field, but it is quite wet at this point. So I'm going to restart again at uh, Frampton on Seven, show you a bit around Frampton as well. It comes at a lovely point at Frampton on Seven. There is what is now an artificial lake off of Frampton Court. It wasn't at the time that the railway built, of course, because it was a gravel pit and there were numerous railways that ran across, including a jetty and something interesting which I'll tell you about in a bit. So, why not continue the journey here on West Country Wanderings looking for a military railway in Gloucestershire. Well, I'm currently at a location called Froster. In fact, I've been here before and made a short video about the village. That's not why I'm here for today. I'm standing over the Bristol to Birmingham main line and I'm at a place called Easington Bridge. I'm going to find out, see what we can find with the old railway, which left the Midland Railway here at this point here at Froster. Now, I've put up a marker as to the exact location I am at the moment. Well, that's the Bristol to Birmingham Railway. Bristol is in the direction heading farthest away from the screen and Birmingham, if a train was coming up now towards the screen, it'll be heading in the Birmingham direction. There's another bridge, you'll probably be able to see that there. And just to the left of that bridge is a, a small wood and our railway left that at that point there and it just went round on a curve and I'll show you that on a map now. I don't think there are going to be any remains at this point 
obviously there, there is no access down to that. There might be a bit further up. This is the road here towards Easington. In fact, I'm standing on the narrow bridge. It's quite close to the road here. Not um, very comfortable in this location, I have to say. There's some sheep down there as well. And we might be able to see where the railway ran between here at Froster. Let's see if we can get a, a, a route view of it and the village of Easton before it made its way across the A38. So our railway left the main line just near that bridge and ran in a bit of a curve just the other side of that wood there. You can see the trees with a mistletoe on the top of it and uh, that was our, our route, just the other side of that wood. So I'm just going to walk down a bit further down this road to see if we can get access to the footpath to get across to where it uh, then made its way across the fields running parallel to the main road going across to the A38. Now our railway was round the other side of that little wood there. It's actually on a bit of a curve and I'll show you again on the, the map. So then it was going across open fields just the other side of that uh, electricity pole there and then it made its way across the field towards the right of the screen. So there's our wood again from another angle and see that line of the electricity poles again that's our wood just make out the mistletoe in it so it went our track went to the right of that wood cut through this hedges in, in front of me and then possibly ran alongside that hedge there may have not been there at that point of course you can really see another little bit of mistletoe on that tree so it would have ran in the foreground of that tree and then you can make out the electricity poles again and it ran down through the field there making its way towards clay pits in the A38 where it joined or crossed the A38 back at that farm we saw earlier in the video so that's our wood again. I do apologise for the audio this uh, section. My little cable's come out the uh, camera. I'm not sure where it's gone. So uh, hopefully I'll get that rectified before I do the next piece. I'm going to close it here at Froster. The light's starting to fade as well. And uh, I'll restart the video again at Frampton on Seven. If you want to have a look at the gravel pits where this little military branch railway terminated. Well, I'm currently now at Frampton on Seven. It's a different day, so we've got the sun out today, which is great. So I've, I've just moved a few miles towards the west. I've got the Gloucester Sharpness Canal right in front of me. We're going to have a look at that first. And the reason I've decided to start the location filming here, of this part of Frampton, rather than the Graven Pits, which we'll look at towards the end of this video, is because there was a spur. So although this was a branch line from the main line, the Midland main line, the Bristol Birmingham main line, as we've said, at Froster, it diverged across those fields near to Parks Farm, making its way to the gravel pits. Once it got to the gravel pits, it made another little diversion. And the reason for the diversion was to come to a small wharf. In fact, at that time, there was a landing stage here at Frampton by the Swing Bridge, and we're going to have a look at that where that was now. The, the landing stage is no longer there. But just behind me, and I'll show in a little bit more detail, is where this little spur off the branch line ran towards the canal. And it went just behind me here in a curve. And I'll do a bit of a closer zoom on that in a second. And what we'll do now is to say we'll have a look at the uh, wharf bit. And it does actually say uh, landing stages on the old map and mooring points, the mooring points are still there. I've got to say the, the, the landing stage where they would have moved the gravel onto the, uh, the, the barges to take them up to the canal towards the uh, Worcester and Birmingham direction or down towards the River Severn and down towards the Bristol Channel. So I think they, they, the reason they did that is it gave them two options. So they could obviously take the gravel out, take it down onto the main line down towards uh, Bristol up to Birmingham but also they could take it here to be moved on the canal using that facility as well. How much in terms of volume was used on the mainline railway and how much is, was used on the canal, I, I can't find out. Anybody has any information for that, from that, I'd be very much delighted to hear from you. So there's the route of our railway again. So the canal is 
back over that way. We're coming into the heart of Frampton Village. It's the most delightful village. I will do another video all about the village and another time. We'll just focus on the, uh, the railway here for the moment. We will be back in here again. So it's making its way along there through the gate that went in front of me. And then it would have crossed the village green right past Frampton Court, making its way to the gravel pits. Can't unfortunately find anything in terms of railway remains, in terms of like the sleepers and the gates that we saw, fascinating finds at uh, Parks Farm. Haven't come across anything like that here, but uh, I'm guessing that because that is raised there, that may have been built up when the railway was built. Again, that's speculation, I don't know for certain, because this field here is, is, is very, very wet and it could flood during the course of heavy rain. So they may have built up the railway slightly to make its progress at this point with the drainage ditch off just to the other side of the course of the railway. Just before we go on to the towpath, just one thing to, to point out. Is this culvert here? The canal is just up on the bank above me. That's Gloucester Sharp Nest Canal. We'll go and look at that sec. There's nothing strange about the culverts running through because obviously it's um, for, for drainage for the fields. And obviously you can understand why it needed to go into the canal. There'd be many that would have crisscrossed the canal. It's the color of the bricks. They are the distinctive blue color of Midland Railway. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not saying that the Midland Railway had this culvert built, but it's potentially possible. Without that though, of course, they may have had some spare bricks and when the railway was built here, I'm not sure. And then the canal company decided to, to use the bricks to build a culvert. Not sure what happened, but certainly looks like a railway connection with the colours of those bricks here at the culvert. So I'm now on the towpath of the Gloucester Sharpness Canal. I'm standing on the exact point where just to the right of me or left would have been a landing stage. And the rye, in fact, it would have been a, just a, a short siding, came onto the, what is now the towpath at this exact point where I'm standing now. And the gravel could well have been unloaded onto the barges, not the narrow boats that are here now, but the barges transferring all of that freight up the way towards Gloucester and the River Severn or down towards Sharpness and the Bristol Channel. As I say, we don't know the freight tonnage that was used at this point, but the loop round for the, the railway, that's where it came from, from the gravel pits here at Frampton on Severn. And now on Frampton's huge village green. There's some argument as to whether it's the biggest village green in England. I'm not sure. I'll let you uh, decide that when uh, I know it has been. It's certainly up there. It's one of the very biggest. There is another one in Essex. I can't remember the name of the village now, which is also very, very big, but uh, it's certainly up there. So I'm not going to get into argument about that. But if you've got any thoughts, drop your comments there. Anyway, that's not why I'm here. Just to show you that the gravel pits are to the other side of me now, to my right, to your left on the, the, the screen as you're looking at it. So that's what we're going to have a look at next. So I'm now on the Frampton Court Estate, which uh, is home to the Clifford family. Been here for over 900 years, which is fantastic. That's a long time to be in one location. But uh, yeah, so the, the, the descendants of the original Clifford family still own the estate and a lot of the farms and the cottages uh, that are around the Frampton area are still owned by them. So we're gonna cross this star now and make our way across to what was once a gravel pit. It isn't anymore to see what remains of our railway. So what lies behind me was a former gravel pit. I mean, in fact, today you wouldn't think so. It's all been landscaped. You've got to bear in mind that the railway here, which, I'll, and again, I'll insert the, uh, the old OS map so you can see the line of rail, the railway went to these gravel pits. It doesn't look like one now. It doesn't look at all industrial. In fact, the land here has come in completely landscaped or re-landscaped back to nature by the, the Clifford family, which is, which is fantastic. 
and it's a beautiful place as you, as you can see it looks like a Norwegian lake here in Gloucestershire it really is the most extraordinary sight and I'll do a, a, take some photographs and uh, some other footage just to give a flavour of what it's like now unfortunately our railway came in on the other side of this lake to what I'm able to get access to unfortunately the other side of the lake is private but what is striking about this place is it does look like it could be part of a National Trust parkland. You can actually see uh, Frampton, of course, the, the grand house in front of the moment, and I'll uh, either take some video or, or footage of that uh, in a bit. So, yeah, our uh, railway went on the other side where you can see those uh, line of trees behind there. Now, on the map, there is something indicated. I think it, I don't have access to the map in front of me at the moment, but I'll put that in now. It's something like an excavator or an elevated platform. On the, and it's, this is marked on the US map, and I had no idea what type of contraption this was. The only thing I can think of it was a like a sloping conveyor belt. So maybe the as the gravel was was being extracted. And as I say, I don't know what type of dredging equipment would have been used back some hundred years or so ago when this was uh, fully operational. And uh, yeah, they, it obviously was obviously to take up the gravel to like a, an, an incline, and maybe for then that to be put into the the trucks that are on the, the railway on the other side of the lake. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> As I say, the whole thing is very, very sketchy, and it all stems from the one photograph I have of the steam train here at Frampton, just on the other side of the lake. So it's it's incredible this place. Um, and again, this railway. I'm, I, I read some canal and river trust. Uh, promotional posters at Freedom Bridge, which is the bridge over the canal here at Frampton. It's called Freedom Bridge because it goes to Freedom rather than Frampton Bridge. That makes sense. That they've got an information panel by the bridge there, and it tells you everything about Frampton, the, the village green cabbage, which we're going to mention on a uh, an, another video, and a, about the narrowboats that are on the canal now and the barges that we used to freight before. It does. It, it mentions all of that stuff. It doesn't, however, mention our wonderful hidden and undiscovered military railway which once ran here in Gloucestershire. It's a little bit chilly by the uh, the lake here, the gravel pits. And I've just made my way through. It is a, a permissive path, although it's not a public right of way. I've just come round the at the side of the lake. So where I was doing that piece of camera at the start of this bit, that's the line of the trees over there you could see behind me. So I've just made my way around. And the reason I've brought you to this bit here is because can actually think that these tracks that I'm walking on at the moment were actually where the rails were and although I can't prove it there is something over here which I think you might find interesting and there is the main track and again I'll, I'll reinsert the OS map at this point so you've got better than me at the moment because I don't have a visual of what the OS map from 1923 looks like in front of me but uh, yes, it's this here, and I realised it could have been, been added later. We have a look at this. This is a track, the main track, which comes down from Frampton on Seven Village Green, and there. That to me looks very much like railway ballast. Uh, extraordinary. So yeah, the, I think the railway is in that direction there, and in that direction there. There isn't a great deal more to see. There's several spurs off, because obviously they had sidings or little shunting points to various parts of the gravel pits, because it obviously was a was a big site, so they, they needed to put track down to to where the gravel was being extracted, and I'm sure it was changed on a as and when basis here during the time that uh, it was was being used and reused as I said because uh, the railway was taken up after it was originally put down by the so I've got the main road there the first world war prisoners of war and it was put down again but uh, yeah amazing uh, to, to think that this was once a railway here in the woods by the side of the gravel pits here at Frampton upon Severn. I also think that the railway went behind me through this strictly no access private gates here. I think this is to do with forestry, it's why they're not allowing you access to that, or perhaps because it's a, a wildlife haven now. But the railway 
went down this spur which is like a spur in between the uh, various gravel pits over here which is now just one huge lake and a nature haven as you can hear all around me. Well that's it for today on West Country Wanderings. I hope you enjoyed the programme discovering this unusual and unknown military railway here in Gloucestershire by the banks of the Gloucestershire Arnest Canal which shot off from the Midland Main Line between Bristol and Birmingham. If you did please consider a like, a subscribe, a share or a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time take care of yourselves, all the best, look after yourselves and I hope to see you on West Country Wanderings again very soon. Cheers now, goodbye. Mm -hmm.